Hey viewers, today we will be discussing a simple physics problem. When we shoot an object from a cannon or throw it ourselves or use a catapult or whatever really, how far will it fly? <laughs> to answer this question, we can use a number of equations. My personal favorite is the simplest of them all, although it might seem complex at first sight. It is this one, in which xt is the x position at time t, x0 is the x position at time 0, uh, vx0 is the x component of the speed at time 0, and t is the time, the variable we're trying to solve for. ax is the x component of the acceleration applied to the object. So because this is a two-dimensional problem, we need a second equation for the y direction, which is this one. Notice that the time variable t is the same in uh, both equations. So if we calculate it for one, we have it for both equations. So in this video, we will assume that the starting velocity is given. Notice that the velocity is a vector, which means that it has an angle as well as a size. So that can be in two or three dimensions. Uh, obviously here we're doing two dimensions. Also, we assume that the height of the launch and landing are given. So we will solve the problem as follows. First, we're going to calculate when gravity makes the object hit the floor at y is zero using the y equation. Then we're going to use the time obtained from that to find out how far the object flew in that time. First of all, we will split the velocity vector in its x and y components using vx0 is v0 times cosine of the angle and the same for vy, but then using the sine of the angle. Since the acceleration in y direction is the gravitational pull, which is a constant g at 9.81 meters per second squared, we should be able to uh, fill in the y equation and that becomes like this. Rearranging this formula results in this, uh, which can be solved with the uh, quadratic formula. Pretty straightforward from here. You just fill it in and we get a solution, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but go with me here. I will explain it later with numbers, so don't worry. Since t is known now, the distance xt can be calculated from the second formula we had. Uh, keep in mind that if wind resistance is, uh, can be ignored, the ax, so the acceleration in x direction, is zero. So it becomes xt is zero plus v0 times sine of the angle times t plus zero. It should be obvious that from this you can calculate xt pretty quickly because everything else is known. Okay, let's now do an example with numbers. Let's set v0 to 10 meters per second, uh, the angle to 45 degrees, and y0 and yt are both zero, which means that we're launching from the ground and the landing will also be on the same height. So our uh, vx0 component, the uh, velocity in x direction, is 7.07. .07. The one in y is the same because it's a 45 degree angle, but it is a different equation as you can see. And the total equation becomes very easy. We're still going to solve it with the quadratic formula for the simple reason that that one always works. Of course you can solve this using a linear equation solver. The result is either 0 seconds or 1.44 seconds, which are the two moments where the object actually breaches the y0 line. The first one, of course, being the launch of the object, the second one being the landing. So we are taking t is 1.44 seconds as our time of flight and inserting this into the x equation. So that means that um, if we just fill it in, xt becomes 7.07 .07 times 1.44 is 10.18 meters. And that is the answer to our question. Hope you learned something today and I will see you next time.